In this video, I'm gonna show you everything you need to know to use SketchUp to create stuff like this, this, or this, using SketchUp free right in your browser, all within the next 10 minutes. And you don't need to know anything about 3D modeling or SketchUp. This tutorial is for complete beginners. So go to app.sketchup.com, create a free account, click create new, and let's build this table together. So click on the rectangle tool, click once to pin the first corner, and then move your mouse out to expand the rectangle. Now, the bottom right-hand corner of your window will show you the current measurement information you're working with. And you can actually just start typing in measurements and press enter in order to model precisely. So let's make this rectangle 18 inches by 18 inches. So the first important rule to remember is all drawing and modification tools will accept dimensional input from you. Just start typing in dimensions and press enter. Now, if you screw up, just press control Z to undo, or you can actually correct dimensions by providing new ones as many times as you'd like, as long as you don't start a new action or activate a new tool. Now, if you do that, you'll just have to use one of the modification tools to resize the entity directly, but we're going to review those later on. For now, let's add some thickness to this tabletop by using the push-pull tool here. So click once, pull up, type three-quarter inch enter. Now you can use decimals, fractions, feet, inches, millimeters, centimeters, whatever you want. SketchUp really doesn't care. It all just works. So congratulations, you now have your very first 3D object. Now, before you do anything else, you need to protect these entities by wrapping them in a group or component. And you do that by triple clicking the entities with the select tool, right click, make group. Now, all of these entities are wrapped inside of a protective container so they won't stick to other entities and it'll allow you to move all of them as one assembly. Now, you should be using groups and components all the time. As soon as you have a basic shape, turn it into a group or component. Now, when you have multiple groups and components, turn those into logical assemblies as well. And you can nest groups and components as much as you'd like. All right, so how do you navigate? Use a three button mouse, scroll to zoom. Now it's gonna zoom from the mouse cursor position. And then to orbit the camera, click the middle mouse button, which is typically the scroll wheel. So hold the middle mouse button, move the mouse, then release, and then repeat as necessary. Bonus tip, hold down shift while orbiting to pan. All right, so let's move the tabletop up into position. Select the tabletop group with the select tool, activate the move tool, and since we know the distance and direction we wanna move, and the table is pre-selected, we can actually just click anywhere to start the move, tap the up arrow to lock the blue axis, and type in 26 and three quarters of an inch, enter. Let's add a bevel. Orbit the camera so you can see the bottom of the tabletop, and in order to edit the entities inside of any group or component, you just need to open it first by double clicking on it with the select tool. Now you can edit the individual faces and edges. So everything in SketchUp is made up of edges and faces. They are the most fundamental entity type of all geometry. And once you understand that, you realize that every single drawing tool in SketchUp simply provides a way to create edges and faces. And all the modification tools simply change the size, position, or orientation of edges and faces. Now the rectangle tool automates the process of creating four edges in one face, but you could actually create the exact same thing using the line tool. There's literally no difference between these two rectangles. They are just four edges in one face. Now the arc tools, circle tool, polygon tools follow the same principle, but they do employ an additional special entity wrapper to make it easier to control curves, which are technically just series of segmented edges. To add the bevel on the table, grab the offset tool here, click on the face, move the mouse inward, click again and type two inch enter. Next, select each of the perimeter edges by holding the control key with the select tool. Then grab the move tool, click once, 
tap the up arrow, then type in quarter inch enter. And you can see we now have this little bevel here. And now that we're done with the tabletop, we can close the group by clicking somewhere outside of the bounding box with the select tool. And now we can start modeling the table legs. Create a square at this corner at one and one eighth by one and one eighth. Next, grab the push pull tool and extrude this down to the ground. So you can snap to the origin so you don't have to type in a distance. Next, we need to turn this into a component. Components let you have identical copies where you can edit one and have all the other copies update too. So triple click, right click, make component. Give it a name and click OK. Let's add the taper to the leg. So double click the component to open it for editing. And notice how the tabletop becomes grayed out. You can use hide rest of model to hide everything outside of the current context. Let's use the tape measure tool to create a guide where we want the taper to start. Grab the tape measure tool, click on the top edge here to create a guide parallel from it. Move the mouse downward along the blue axis and type in six inch enter. Now we can reference the guides using the line tool to subdivide the faces where we want the taper. So remember to use the arrow keys to lock axes. It's just a good habit to get into so you know you're drawing a long axis. Once the lines are drawn, we can go down to the bottom here and use the scale tool to scale the bottom of the leg inward by a factor of 0.5. Now you can use the scale tool on any selection and you can provide it either a scale factor or an absolute dimension. Okay, so now let's exit the component and copy some legs to each corner of the table. We can actually create copies using the move tool. So select the leg, grab the move tool, and click on this specific point right here. Tap control to activate copy mode and move it to this specific point on the tabletop. Now, since we're using the inference system for this move, we don't need to type in a dimension. Now you notice that the taper is facing the wrong way. So we need to rotate this copy 90 degrees. And an easy way to do that is to use the built-in rotation grips that appear on selected groups and components when you have the move tool active. And so you can repeat this for the other two legs, but if you're feeling up for it, I wanna show you an advanced way to do this using the rotate tool so I can show you some advanced inference system tricks while we're at it. So select the leg, grab the rotate tool, and the rotate tool will orient according to which face you're hovering over. But like most tools in SketchUp, wink, wink, you can lock the orientation using the up, left, right, or down arrow key. Now I haven't told you about the down arrow key yet, but it's an inference lock that lets you inference edges and faces in your model that aren't aligned to one of the three axes. So let's go ahead and lock the blue axis with the up arrow key. And just like the move tool, you can use the rotate tool to make copies too. So let's rotate three copies around the center of the table, but how do you actually find the center point? Well, if you hover over an inference point for about a second or two, SketchUp will temporarily track from that point. And the cool thing is you can do this with two inference points, which will then allow you to find their intersection. And from there, we just click to place the rotation point, tap control to switch to copy mode, click again to establish the reference line, then move the mouse until you snap to 90 degrees and click to place the first copy. Next, type in 3x enter, and that will place three copies in total. Now you can create areas like this with the move tool too, by using either a multiplication sign or division sign, depending on where you want the copies to be arrayed. Then just use everything you've learned so far to add the aprons, rails, and drawer. Remember to use groups and components for everything. Now, if you find the tabletop getting in your way as you model, you can click on tags, add a new tag, then with the tag selected, you can click on the tabletop to apply it to the group. And now you can control the visibility of the top by toggling this icon right here. You can find materials to apply to your model right here. Just click on a swatch to activate the paint bucket tool and apply the material to the model. You can also change the look of your model using styles here. So styles control a variety of different visual properties to dramatically change the look of your model. Now there are a ton of additional features, tips, and workflows that I haven't covered 
in this video. So if this is your first time on my channel, my name is Matt Donnelly and I'm a SketchUp teacher and author. And you can find my books in the links below and make sure you subscribe to my channel to get more SketchUp tutorials just like this. Now leave a comment below if there's any part of the video you got stuck on or if you'd like me to make a video on a specific SketchUp topic. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.